Let's pray. Precious, wonderful Holy Spirit, have your way. May Jesus be glorified through this time as we pursue you, as we draw near to you by the presence and the power of your wonderful Holy Spirit. May you have your way. Be glorified as we learn more about you, as we draw near to fellowshipping with the wonderful Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm Jared Lasky of Fireborn Ministries. My wife and I uh, have been doing this ministry for a number of years now, having the most fun of our lives. I've got a podcast called Adventures in the Spirit, and I'm enjoying doing these live coaching calls and the e-courses on Charisma Courses. But if you have been acquainted with my ministry at all, you would know and understand that I love the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the most incredible person that I know. He's the most incredible um, presence, power person that I've ever encountered in my entire life, and I would not be here without him. Uh, so tonight with this, this coaching for the Fellowship of the Holy Spirit e-course, now I've got two e-courses on the Holy Spirit. The first one is on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we've seen uh, a thousand, probably about 1,100 or so people go through that, that e-course and people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, now we've got this one, Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So I hope that um, you've been able to look at a few of the videos and uh, go through the downloadable PDF on Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I, but we wanted to add coaching to our e-courses uh, just to lead people through it, uh, disciple them, mentor them, and also provide an opportunity for question and answer. So tonight, I really wanted to talk about Jesus, the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, because Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. The moment that we give our lives and we give our heart to Jesus, we received the Holy Spirit. In the gift of salvation, the Holy Spirit was, was imputed into us, filled us up, and uh, dwells in us. But there is this encounter, this empowerment encounter called the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes people could be kind of, uh, they could be hang up or whatever on when the baptism with the spirit is supposed to take place. But I think when we look at uh, the scripture, we could see that people can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. I've seen that happen. We see in the book of Acts in the household of, of Cornelius before anybody dedicated their lives to Jesus, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them. So in that moment, there's this massively incredible supernatural experience where these people in the household of Cornelius were baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so somewhere in there, uh, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were Christians, and then they were water baptized. So I don't think we should get hung up on when this encounter of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is supposed to take place. Some people think it has to be uh, after water baptism or during water baptism. I've seen it all. Uh, and I think it, it's what matters is that we encounter God. We encounter the Holy Spirit through that. So the Holy Spirit fills us the moment we give our life to Christ. And this baptism of the Holy Spirit can can take place in that moment. It could take place a week later. It could take place months or even years later, usually depending on when the biblical truth of the promised blessing of the baptism was, was kind of approached us. Some of us may have a different faith background. Uh, I was born and raised in the non-denominational churches, um, Christian churches, which were affiliated with a great group of people who did, did not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit for today. But because the Holy Spirit was speaking to me as a teenager through prophetic dreams and a number of other things, within a few years, I'd walked into and experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which changed and transformed my life. And I will tell you later about my personal experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a free gift given to us by Jesus 
who is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. So that's my first point for this evening's coaching call is that Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. When we look at the Gospels, we see John the Baptist, who was the forerunner. He was the prophesied Elijah. Now, he wasn't Elijah, but he was a prophesied person who was like the prophet Elijah uh, in, in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 through 6, and then in Isaiah 40. So in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 through 6, we see there's this type of Elijah prophet who would be coming uh, and confirming the, the Savior, the Messiah. And so John the Baptist not only confirmed Jesus as the Lamb of God, but he confirmed Jesus as the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. In, in um, jo John chapter 1, verses 29 through 34, it says, The next day he, so John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said. So John's saying, this is he of who I've said. After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose, I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And then John the Baptist bore witness. He said, I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness, this is the Son of God. So John the Baptist testified that Jesus, he, he gave these two things. He said, Jesus is the Lamb of God, and Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. So according to this true account, this true story, and this testimony of John the Baptist in the, in the chapter, first, first John, uh, the first chapter of the Gospel of John, John was using verbiage and the terminology that the other three Gospels uh, used as well about Jesus the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Gospel of John is kind of a different take, a different viewpoint, which is not, it's, it's a gospel, but it kind of stands alone. The other three gospels are very same and similar, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, they have a lot of the same true stories, but the Gospel of John is completely different. But I think John did that on purpose as he wrote the, the Gospel of John years later, probably about the 50s or 60s. AD or so, because Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those Gospels were already existing in about 60 to 65 AD. But John had seen those Gospels were great, but he knew he needed to do something a little bit different, uh, which were all true. But still, some of the same terminology that were used in the previous ones, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John used as well about Jesus being the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. So in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 3, we see that John the Baptist was in the wilderness of Judea, and he was preaching a message saying that, uh, telling people to repent. He was saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so John the Baptist was actually the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. He's the person saying, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And he was the voice of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, the voice crying in the wilderness. So here's John the Baptist in the wilderness of Judea, who's saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he's saying that uh, in, in Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 through 12, he says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. 
So John the Baptist baptized people in water. He, he was water baptizing them as a sign of repentance. And he was preparing for the coming of the Messiah, who he then testifies is Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world, and the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. So in Matthew chapter 3, Jesus came to John the Baptist and was water baptized by John. And then this incredible supernatural experience took, took place where, um, depending on when you when you look at the text, John saw this, but also other people around there saw this and other people heard what what transpired because the heavens were open and the spirit of God descended upon Jesus like a dove and the voice of God boomed or thundered saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. So in Matthew chapter three, we see the Trinity at work here we see god the father with his voice speaking we see god the son being water baptized and we see god the holy spirit descending on god the son at like a dove alighting on him uh i've heard it said some people think that it was a form um, of the holy spirit looking like a dove it was uh, maybe the size of a dove and, you know, things like that. I don't think we need to get too caught up in how it looked, but what we see in the spiritual truth is that John testified, this is he, this is the one you see the Holy Spirit to sin upon. He's the Messiah. He's the Lamb of God, and he's the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. So it was very important that John, the promised uh, well, the prophesied Elijah type figure testifies that this is the son of God. This is the lamb of God. This is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, the one on whom you see the Holy Spirit descend upon. So we see Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. And we see that in the gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter one, verses five through eight, it says, in all the country of Judea, and all Jerusalem were going out to him, to John the Baptist, and they were being water baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. So John was pretty, pretty intense here. But he preached saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then in the gospel of Luke, in Luke chapter three, verses 15 through 17, it says, as the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I, is coming, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then he says the same thing that, that we see in Matthew. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with his, his unquenchable fire. Now that's something that's pretty interesting here uh, about the baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire. Um, some people tend to say that this is oh, two separate things. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then there's this baptism of fire. But when we look a little bit closer, this is kind of one and the same. So the baptism with the Holy Spirit is also the baptism of fire. They're not two separate experiences. But but there's this, this terminology here, and then as we also see in, um, in Mark or in Matthew about the winnowing fire, the threshing floor. So there's this baptism of the Holy Spirit but there's, and fire. So there's this blessing in it, but it's also a sign of what could be judgment for people. Now, it's not the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not judgment but it's a sign of the presence and power of God coming upon the people, the kids, the children of God that he loves. 
but the judgment is for the people who who don't come to Jesus. So they see the power and the display of the Holy Spirit taking place through the church, through the disciples of Jesus, and people have the choice to choose to jump into the blessing or to be judged by it. Now, this is kind of interesting because in Numbers 11, uh, we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, on the children of Israel. And Moses says that he wishes that all God's people will prophesy. And in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is poured out on the day of Pentecost. And we see the, the, when the disciples were baptized with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, they're prophesying, they're foretelling and foretelling the word of God. And so we see this paradigm, the outpouring in, in numbers in the Old Testament, and then the outpouring in, in the New Testament. So Acts chapter 2 was actually a fulfillment of Moses' prayer because he said he wants all God's people to prophesy. He wants to, he, Moses was praying that all God's children receive the Holy Spirit. And then thousands of years later on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out for the first time. And the children of God are prophesying, declaring the praises of God. They're speaking in tongues. Thousands, 3,000 people were saved on the day of Pentecost. And and now the gift is for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord so we can all uh, walk out in this blessing. But on the flip side of that is those who don't come to Jesus can be judged. So the sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a blessing. It's a promise for us. It's Jesus, the baptizer of the Holy Spirit, giving it to us. But for those who don't come to Jesus, it could be a, a, a bad thing if they don't repent because the gospel message has to be coupled with, with this as, as John the Baptist was saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And now that we're in the new covenant, we tell people to turn their hearts to the Lord, receive the blessing. And so that's what our message is supposed to be when it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. So um, I know that that was kind of like a side note or a, or a tangent here real quick. But as we see in um, the Matthew, we see it in John, we see it in Mark, we see it in Luke, that Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. This is a spiritual truth. This is who one of the things that Jesus does. He is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. And I think it's very important for us when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit to know and understand Jesus, who is Lord, we, we need to also understand him as the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. And just as water baptism uh, is an immersion, when we get into the water, we're immersed into the water, there's this baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a baptism of power and supernaturally we could picture it or it's like uh, an immersion of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's a supernatural transaction or encounter where we're immersed in the presence and power of the Holy Spirit as, as if it's like Jesus laying hands on us. And the baptism with the Holy Spirit is what Jesus was referring to in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where he says, he tells his disciples, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, I love that verse. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 is my life verse. I'm not sure how many of you guys have a life verse, but that is my favorite Bible verse of all time, probably because when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it was life-changing. It was life so transformational for me. Um, this, this power, this baptism of the Holy Spirit empowers us to be witnesses in our homes, in our workplaces, and everywhere that we go. Uh, it empowers us to tell other people about Jesus. So I think it's very important for us to know and understand Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. It's not the minister. It's not the people that laid hands on us if we received it by the laying on of hands. 
it's uh, th those are all good things. God can use those people, those groups, um, other persons to lay hands us on us as an activation of faith. But ultimately, Jesus is the one who does that. Um, in Acts chapter one, verse eight, when it uses the word power, um, it, it's the, the Greek word, you may have heard this before, of dunamis, and that's power. Uh, and some people wrongly interpret it saying that's where it's like dynamite. Well, no, you can't compare the power of the Holy Spirit with dynamite. Okay, the, because dynamite is a small explosive power. Uh, maybe we could use that to kind of understand the explosive, you know, something taking place like that. But the power of God can't even be compared to a stick of dynamite. But the Greek word dunamis is, is the supernatural power that is not in your own strength. When you look at that word dunamis for power, it's referring to the power of God alone. And you can't have had this happen without God alone. So it, it shows that he's the one that does it. You know, we we're part we're in it, but he's the one that does it. We can't do any of this power in our own strength, but it's a complete and total reliance on the Holy Spirit himself, on Jesus the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. It's his power through us. So, um, you know, I, I've been in ministry a number of years, uh, and when people start say, talking a lot about themselves, I tend to cringe just a little bit when they're saying I, 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 me, 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 or they're talking about the power of God as if it was them doing it. When it's all of it, it's Jesus through them. It's the Holy Spirit through them. Uh, so the dunamis, the power of the Holy Spirit, it's not in our own ability, but it's completely God's ability, and we can't have had it or experience it or minister in it without God flowing through us. So Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. The second point I wanted to make tonight is that Jesus promises the baptism with the Holy Spirit. So when we look up the word promise in the Nelson's Bible Dictionary, it defines it saying that it's a solemn pledge to perform or grant something specific. It's the, the definition continues to say that all biblical promises are those made by God to human beings, indicating that his nature is characterized chiefly by grace and faithfulness. So with that definition, that the promise is a solemn pledge and that it's made by God to us, it reveals his character and his grace and his faithfulness. Out of God's nature, he makes and he keeps his promises. And it's out of his nature and his love for you and I that he promises the gift of the Holy Spirit to all of us. I think that is amazing. That's just incredible to think about. When he promises it to us, it's ours. We could rest in knowing that, that he's going to do it. He's going to, to pour it out because he loves us. And it's his nature. It's in his nature to fulfill these promises, to give these promises to us. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he promised the Holy Spirit to his followers. In John chapter 14, in John chapter 15, and John chapter 16, it's if you look at, at those passages of scripture, scripture here in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, you'll see that it's loaded with discussion on the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said that uh, he was guaranteeing that his disciples will do greater things than he did in his name because of the promised Holy Spirit who was coming. God was going to send the Holy Spirit and empower the followers of Jesus. 
So Jesus was guaranteeing them in John 14, 15, and 16 that the comforter's coming. Jesus was telling them, I'm going to have, I'm going to be gone soon, but you'll have a comforter. You'll have a guide. You'll have the Holy Spirit and you will be able to do greater things than I did. So it's like Jesus as God in the flesh, he was one man, but as God in the Holy Spirit, he fills all of us and everywhere we go, it's like there's millions of, of him out there in the world doing great things for his glory done in his name. The disciples, they didn't know what to expect. They couldn't fully comprehend what Jesus was saying in that moment. They're, they're sad. They're in grief. They don't know what's taking place. But Jesus was promising the helper, the spirit of truth, who will be with them, who will walk alongside them, who will guide them, who remind them of, of things that he said so that, well, uh, they, they would write the Gospels. A few of them would, would write the Gospels. They would write epistles, and they would go out in, on missions to declare the Gospel message. And Jesus was promising them the Holy Spirit would empower them so that they would tell the Gospel in and like he did with signs and wonders following them. Signs, as Christians, we, we don't run after signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are supposed to follow us. So wherever we go, signs and wonders are supposed to take place. We shouldn't be hunting for them or looking for them. All of us, if we have the Holy Spirit, we can expect signs and wonders to follow us to glorify Jesus and for people to come to him uh, through them. And it's, it's all about his love. I mean, the, in the gospel of Mark, we, we see when Jesus was about to ascend into heaven, he says, you'll speak in new tongues. You'll see the, you'll cast out demons, you know, signs and wonders will follow believers. So we don't follow signs and wonders, signs and wonders follow us wherever we go because of the Holy spirit, through us and in us. Um, the Holy Spirit loves to glorify Jesus. He empowers us to glorify Jesus. And I am so grateful for the wonderful Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And I'm so thankful that in Acts chapter 2, verses 38 through 39, and I'll, I'll look that up here real quick. Acts chapter 2, Verses 38 to 39. This is on the day of Pentecost. It says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized. Very similar message as John the Baptist. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So verse 39, very important to understand, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. So the promise, well, the gift in verse 38. So we repent, there's baptism, water baptism, there's the forgiveness of sins when we give our life to Jesus, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift is the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the gift. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is part of that transaction. It's part of that, that supernatural experience that empowers us to be able to tell other people more about Jesus. Now, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make us better people, okay? Uh, it makes us better equipped witnesses to testify about Jesus. So uh, we still have to walk out the, the spirit abundant life. We still have to walk out the spirit empowered life. We still have to walk away from bad habits and hangups uh, and sin and, and things like that. We still walk out sanctification, but the baptism with the Holy Spirit empowers us to be better witnesses to tell other people about Jesus, to live it out, and to sh uh, shine and show Jesus through us. For the promise of, oh man, this is amazing. 
Acts 2.39, the promise is for you. It's for your children and for all, all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. So the gift, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father is promised to all of us. Jesus, the baptizer of the Holy Spirit, promises the gift of the Holy Spirit to you and I, to our kids, to our grandkids, great-grandkids, all generations. Uh, I've seen all my kids receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the twins were four. My twins were, they're, they're 11 now. They were four. My, my oldest, he's 15. He received the, the Holy Spirit at five. Uh, and then my youngest, Isaiah, you know, he's nine now. He received it at five. Um, when my youngest had received it, <laughs> he, he, he came into my bedroom and I'm praying in, in tongues, laying in the bed. And he, he said that he wanted to speak Spanish too. <laughs> and I said, it's not Spanish. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I said, just start worshiping Jesus and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Now, kids are easy. They get it quick. So <laughs> he, he got under the covers, covered his head with a blanket, and just asked the Holy Spirit to fill him up. And then he starts singing in tongues. And I just let him keep singing in it. <laughs> and, um, when my twins, man, uh, I was putting them to bed. Uh, Malachi and Lydia, I was putting them to bed. And, and I just felt the, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit on, on them. And I just said, hey guys, I think the Holy Spirit wants to fill you now. Will you pray this prayer to receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And they prayed in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, will you fill me up? And then they just start speaking in tongues. And it's just so beautiful and so gentle and, and amazing. You know, um, when, when I did uh, group homes, I used to, I've worked in group homes over the years with kids who were severely traumatized or um, had some, had some developmental delays and maybe you had been abused, man, they would receive the Holy Spirit just boom, like that. Just amazing. Whether it was at uh, sitting at the dinner table, whether it was while they're playing Legos, they, they pray the prayer of, the, uh, of asking the Holy Spirit to fill them. And then the Holy Spirit fills them and they start speaking in tongues and they receive the baptism of the Spirit. And I just let them pray for the next five minutes or 30 minutes or however long it was or even on work duties. I remember that a uh, kid was interested and he was getting in trouble that day. He was having a bad day, but, and his name was Nico. And this is a number of years ago, but while he's raking, he's like, okay, I'll pray. So he prays and the Holy Spirit fills him and he keeps raking and he's praying in tongues. Kids are amazing. Kids are amazing. Um, I've seen, uh, probably hundreds of adults receive the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well. Even um, recently, uh, I do these Skype events in Pakistan, and I'll preach uh, just from here in my office on the computer. I will preach the gospel. We'll, we'll pray for people to receive healing and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We, we had 191 people give their hearts to the Lord at the last one just uh, last month. And on screen, you know, I don't know how many received the baptism of the Spirit, but I could see them praying in the Spirit. I could see a whole groups of them receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's Jesus doing it, you know. Uh, so we can't put God in a box. You know, it's, it's an amazing adventure with him, Jesus, who is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. So the promise is for you. The promise is for me. The promise is for our kids. It's for all who call on the name of Jesus, and he loves us. He loves us so much. He wants to give us the Holy Spirit without measure. And recently, we, we had a, a webinar um, about uh, the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, and, and I wanted people to understand the Holy Spirit is given without measure. The Holy Spirit is given without limit. And that's in the Gospel of John, and that means that we can have as much of the Holy Spirit or as little of the Holy Spirit as we want. It's up to us. Um, I interviewed Georgian Banov recently for my podcast, Adventures in the Spirit. 
So the audio is dropping on Tuesday on Charisma. But in his book, so I got parts of his story uh, in, in the interview for the podcast. Uh, but in his book, he, he talks about how he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how there was a point where he was, people were laying hands on him and he, it's like he's in heaven at that moment and he's praying in the spirit and he's seeing heaven, but there's so much power that eventually he asked the Holy Spirit to stop. Uh, and then it, it stopped, you know, God won't give us more than we can handle. But then he said, like within a few minutes, he realized, wait, if this is from God, then it's a good thing. So he's not going to kill me. <laughs> so he asked for more and then God gave him more. Uh, I, I just thought that was an incredible story from him. So um, that, that's in his book called Joy. And uh, but I wanted us to know that story because the Holy Spirit gave George and Banov as much of him as he wanted in that moment. And then George and Banov couldn't take it uh, and ask for it to stop. But then he realized, wait, if it's good, then I should ask for more and God will give me more. And he's not going to overwhelm me, even though I might feel in that moment, he's like, God's not going to crush me. God, everything that God gives is good. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the, the encounters of the Holy Spirit, I could have as much of it as I want. So for me, one of my prayers is more. <laughs> just more Lord. So the promise is for you. The promise is for me. It's for all who call on Jesus. So my third point for tonight is if you don't have the baptism of the spirit, if you haven't experienced the baptism of the spirit, just ask the baptizer with the Holy Spirit to baptize you and keep asking, keep asking because he'll give it. Some of us like I said, we could look at the scripture. Some people receive it at salvation. Some people through the water baptism, they rise up out of the waters receiving it. Some it's years later for my mom. She, um, she'd always had this, uh, and she's an amazing woman, but there was a while where, um, you know, there, there was this time when they were young in the faith. This was a number of years ago, and there was a particular movement that kind of made them feel less than if they didn't have the baptism of the Spirit. And there were some doctrinal things there, but um, so my, my parents were kind of turned off to it for a number of years. And then later when I, I walked into it and encountered it, um, they saw my, my changed life. And uh, they, my mom was curious, and I told her, she's like, Jared, I've asked, and I just didn't get it. And I was like, well, mom, you got to keep asking. Keep asking. It's like a, it's a free gift, you know, keep ask, you know, keep asking. The scripture says that. Be like the persistent widow to the unjust judge, and our God is not unjust. So how much more will God give it to us if we keep asking like the persistent widow? But I told my mom, I was like, mom, you might wake up and pray in tongues, that might be it. So sometime later, there's a situation uh, that was taking place. My mom was praying and praying and praying and goes to bed praying. She wakes up praying in tongues, which woke up my dad and she kept praying in tongues. And then she didn't exercise it much afterward. Um, so she kind of just let it bury. And I, I try to tell people when you receive it, keep praying in it, praying it every day, every day for the rest of your life one way or another, whether you're driving, whether you're walking, whatever it is you're doing, praying it for a minute, five minutes, 20 minutes, two hours, whatever it takes. So my mom had kind of buried it. So now she's on a mission trip with me in I think the year 2014 in the Dominican Republic. And she's like, I don't have it anymore, Jared. I just don't have it. I was like, no, mom, it might come. It might happen to you today. Like it could happen to you anytime today. And as we're talking about it, this motorcycle drives up to us motorcycle dies in front of us towards my mom and she gets the opportunity to pray and lead this gentleman to Jesus uh, wit witness to him tell him about Jesus lead him to Jesus lead him in the prayer of salvation and then the motorcycle starts it's able to start I mean it dies okay it died in front of us he couldn't get it started my mom's able to preach the gospel to this gentleman he comes to Jesus, commits his life to Jesus, motorcycle is able to start. And I'd already walked down about 20 feet away to test uh, witness to other people. 
my mom comes walking up to me. She's like, Jared, it just happened. <laughs> I just started praying in tongues for that man who just drove off that I led to the Lord. So I was like, mom, you see, isn't God amazing? So ask the baptizer with the Holy Spirit, ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 11, Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. And the disciples had watched Jesus' life closely, and they knew that prayer was connected to the power that he was working in. So they asked him to teach them to pray. And in the context of prayer, Jesus uh, contrasts how even though people may be evil, they, you know, dads could be evil. They could still give good gifts to their children who ask, but God is not evil. So how much more will God give us for those who ask? He says in Luke 11, for everyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, finds, to, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. So, and then he says, how much more will the heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus was showing that in asking through prayer, God will give the gift to the Holy Spirit. God, who is all loving, God, who is all good, will give the gift of the Holy Spirit to all of his kids who ask, who seek, and who knock. When Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus called this the promise of the Father in Luke 24, verse 49. Jesus said, behold, I'm sending the promise of the Father upon you, but stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. And he's already told his disciples, ask, ask. So I want to share with you as, as we start closing for this evening's coaching, how I received the baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I remember the date, November 14th of 19. 98, one of the most transformational nights of my life. So I was in youth with a mission at a discipleship training school, and I had quit my lifestyle of drugs and alcohol. I put it behind me, and I'm only weeks in this walk with Jesus. There, I, I can't get into too much of my testimony now about how I ended up there, uh, but I, I, I knew God was getting a hold of me. I had to give my life to Jesus. I had to be all in or else uh, I knew bad things. I'd probably be dead. So God was working in me deeply, deeply. He's breaking me. I mean, a lot of things that I was walking through, some deliverance I needed. And he was working in me deeply in this discipleship training school. And so at that point, the fog of addiction had vanished, and I was asking God for more. And I didn't know what more of God meant. I just knew I needed more. I wanted more. Whatever it took, I would take whatever he has. We sang songs about more, and I craved the presence and the power of God. I would read anything I could about him, and uh, I didn't know anything about the power of the Holy Spirit besides the prophetic dreams that I'd had. But but one day, we're on work duties in, in Youth with a Mission, and I hear these international students talking, and I was like, man, I would love to speak in another language if I could. And this lady from New Zealand, a very powerful woman, she's like, do you speak in tongues? <laughs> and I was like, no. In my mind, I didn't really know what that was. I'd heard a little bit about it, been around some people, but not much. And my, as I said earlier, my church never really believed in it at all. But she laid hands on my cheeks and she starts praying for me to receive the gift of tongues. She lays her, her hands right on my cheeks. She calls forth tongues and she's encouraging me to ask for, for the tongues in prayer. And I didn't know what tongues was or, or other spiritual gifts, but I knew if tongues is the more that I'm, I, I'm wanting, then I'll take it, whatever it is, I'll, whatever God has, I, if, I'll take it. And so that night, uh, I was having these prophetic dreams and my roommates my saw my cheeks on fire, like just on fire. They were fiery red. And they told me that in the morning. I was like, yeah, uh, it was powerful stuff. But I'm having these prophetic dreams and God's speaking to me in a number of different ways. And I start asking for more. And I'm having these vivid dreams every day for the next 
week, week and a half, I'm just asking for more. And I'm asking for tongues specifically. So uh, there's a, a lot of prophetic words during that course of that week. But I go to my small group leader by the name of Sam. And I told him everything that God was doing the, for that week and how I was asking for tongues. And like when I'm praying for more, I'd be like, and whatever that is. <laughs> but Sam looks at me, he's like, I believe it's going to happen to you right now. I said, okay. <laughs> and so then he, I, he's like, okay, stand up and put your hands out like this. And I, I quickly was like, okay, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm, I'm like trying to repent real quick. <laughs> and um, I just closed my eyes. I raised my hands. And I asked the Holy Spirit. I said, will you give me Jesus? Will you give me tongues? It was really simple, really basic. Jesus, will you baptize me in the Holy Spirit? And Sam's praying over me. He's laying hands on me. But I hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit in my ear, this one syllable. And sure, it was funny, but I could also see it in my mind. And I start speaking that out. I just start speaking it out. And the Holy Spirit enables us as we do the speaking. And I keep speaking it out. And then it's like the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit poured out upon me with and the electricity of the power and the love and the grace of the Holy Spirit surged through me. And it's like my mouth just starts going and I'm, I'm doing the speaking and I just want more and I'm asking for more. And I keep speaking in tongues and more syllables and phrases. And the power of the Holy Spirit surged through me like never before. It was like electricity. It was like waves. Uh, the only way I could compare is like waves of the ocean ebbing and flowing and pouring upon me and power and love and grace for the next like two and a half hours and I'm shaking and I'm crying and I'm laughing and I'm praying in tongues. And I think we had three or four waves of the Holy Spirit and I'd switch over to English and tell Jesus, thank you. And then I'd go back into speaking in tongues and just praying for the next two and a half hours. And oh, I remember coming to and just being like, wow. And it's like, wow, my life was changed. And Sam looked at me and he's like, you know, Jared, what God did tonight, this is, this is amazing. But the devil's going to try to tell you it didn't happen. I was like, no. Uh, and the, uh, the only vocabulary I could say at that time was this was real. And this was the highest high of my life. That's the only thing I could compare it to. There's no, but, you know, to this day, I'm just like, you know, that's what I could compare it to. Like, how could I ever go back into drugs and alcohol and all that mess when this, this was the most incredible supernatural encounter of my life. And I needed that experience in that way. I needed it for those two and a half hours. And then, then Sam told me to pray in tongues every day. And ever since I have, I've prayed in tongues every day, even in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan, I, I, I prayed in tongues, you, you name it, man, uh, near ambassadors and, and government officials and just every day. You know, I'm driving, you know, every day, uh, just ever since then, my life has never been the same. And since then, I've seen hundreds of people, thousands of people receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit one way or another. Never compare your experience with someone else's experience. You know, I've seen people receive it in, you know, five seconds, 30 seconds. That's what they needed. I've seen people, it takes 10 minutes. I've seen people receive it and they feel the love and the power of the electricity and the, the, again, I, I don't have the words to describe what had, what had happened to me. You know, I could compare it with fire and love and electricity and waves and, you know, but it was life-changing, transformational, but we can't compare our experience with someone else's. God gives you what you need when you need it. And oftentimes in the way that you can receive it in the way that you can accept it you know uh and it's him initiating it it's him doing it and then we partner with him and so as i said earlier we do the speaking and the holy spirit does the enabling he's not going to like move our mouths and force us to do it you know we partner with him and then it just flows and it's powerful and it empowers us to be better witnesses for Jesus. So 
uh, that was my personal experience. And uh, I've seen, again, I shared with you the stories about how my kids had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My wife received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when she was at summer camp when she was 13 years old. She was slain in the spirit and, you know, praying in tongues for the next 15 or 20 minutes or so. And she was changed and transformed. I've seen kids and group homes receive it. I've seen youth group kids receive the baptism of the spirit in, in the, the church van. Um, uh, I've, I've seen people receive, a gentleman receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit outside um, at, at a shooting range. We're going through this training for contracting and he was curious about everything. And I laid hands on him and uh, the Holy Spirit rose up within him and he started speaking. In, in tongues and he received the baptism of the spirit we can't limit what god does when or where <laughs> um or even how but it's a promise for all of us and it's jesus doing it so the gift is for you luke chapter 11 verse 13 you know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give the holy spirit to those who ask him so ask and keep asking, and I believe that you'll receive it. It's Jesus who does it, and Jesus loves you, and he'll do it. Amen. So um, does anybody have any questions? We've got just about 10 more minutes. I, I, I just prefer that these are just an hour long or so. Uh, and again, these are recorded and then uploaded on the uh, a secret YouTube link. So this will be emailed out to everybody. Uh, I think we've got 20 some people going through the course, so they will have access to the coaching. But does anybody have any questions uh, before we um, have some prayer? So would you say that uh, the only evidence of baptism of the Holy Spirit is the speaking in tongues? Or could it be any other manifestation of the outflow of the Holy Spirit living in you. Because the, uh, the, the, the speaking in tongues, this is uh, the, it's an outflow of the Holy Spirit, and then it comes out as tongues, right? Um, so what about an outflow of the Holy Spirit that's um, being evidenced not in speaking in tongues, but in something else? Well, um, that's a great question. I think that speaking in tongues is one of the signs of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I know that there are differences of doctrinal opinion on it. Uh, I know some people have had an aversion to it. Um, I think that tongues will flow eventually. It may not necessarily happen in that moment, but for the most part, majority of the time, uh, I've seen it happen in the moment, but uh, I've had people in my life and ministry who had an aversion to it. So they received the, the presence and power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They did not in that time uh, pray in tongues, but they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whether it's uh, through the joy of the Lord, whether it's through laughter, uh, whether it's through you know even shaking or other manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think tongues can flow later. Uh, I think that I, it's one of the signs, but really, who does it glorify? It needs to glorify Jesus. It needs to reveal the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. People, people can have a supernatural experience all day. Okay, People can receive, uh, we could go to revival meetings, and people can experience the power of God and fall down and uh, all these other manifestations, but still needs to change their life. They still have to choose for their life to be changed. They're, they're, hopefully they start walking in, and it's a process. Hopefully they start walking in more love. They start walking in more joy. They show the evidence of the fruit of the spirit. I think that that's one of the key evidences is love. You know, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, I know some people can get caught up in the initial physical evidence. I think tongues is an evidence. I think 
uh, again, it happens a majority of the time when people receive the baptism of the Spirit, but not all the time. But I do believe that tongues will flow later in some people's lives. Now, some people can receive the baptism of the Spirit to start prophesying. I mean, I've seen kids, they receive an encounter with the Holy Spirit, they start prophesying. Uh, it happens, you know, I don't think we could put God in a box. But I, I think one of the key evidences is love. Love has to be key. So, yeah, I hope that that answers your question. Does that help? Um, yeah, somewhat. Uh, but the other question is, um, and you might, most probably you are aware of that, you said that the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit doesn't sanctify you immediately, but uh, uh, makes you, what did you say? Makes you uh, better witnesses, right? Um, I know lots of people who uh, genuinely speak in tongues. I haven't seen them bringing someone to, for, to Christ for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. So how do you explain that? Well, just because we're not, not all of us are called to be evangelists, you know. Well, some don't even have a burden sometimes. Right, right, right. Now, it makes us, it's supposed to make us a better equipped witness to tell others about Jesus. And we all have different gifts of the Holy Spirit. Some people walk in the offices, like the spiritual offices of apostle, prophet, evangelist, or pastor, or teacher. Um, so, and but not all. I mean, I would say all of us have spiritual gifts because of the Holy Spirit. Some people have the spiritual gift of administration. Some people have the gift of evangelism. Some people have the gift of helps or mercy. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit can make us flow better in those spiritual gifts. So not all of us, we shouldn't expect that when we receive the baptism of the Spirit, now, now we're all to be evangelists. Uh, but it, I've seen it, people who receive it and then they're telling everybody, right? Like they're just going everywhere. Um, but we also should look at the scripture that, you know, um, some plant a seed, some harvest, right? But we're all doing something in the kingdom of God. Like we all have a part to play. Uh, we all have a role in yeah, the body of Christ. Yeah. So yeah. it can make us very equipped to tell others about Jesus, to show uh, the spirit and power of life as well. Uh, it, and it's again, like the signs is the love of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, uh, change transformed life. You know, I'm um, sure. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure we could all probably share stories of people who um, had a supernatural, maybe they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they still had drug addiction. You know, they still had these other things they had to walk out. So, um, and for me, I'm not, I'm not the Holy Spirit. You know, we're not the Holy Spirit. We need to let the Holy Spirit continue to do his work in those people's lives. Uh, and only he truly knows uh, what has changed in their heart. So can someone say that uh, he had been baptized um, with the Holy Spirit, but uh, didn't experience any experience any feeling or whatever, but by faith, he has asked and um, he believes that he has been baptized because Je Jesus promised it, she asked and he get it. Or someone has to say, no, I need to feel something. I need to have an, a special encounter. Then I knew I had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a great evangelist, great evangelist. We all know who he is, if, if I gave you his name. He was from a Christian denomination that didn't flow in the gifts of the Spirit, but he's led millions of people to Jesus he testifies to a time where he went in prayer out in the woods and something transpired in his heart and he knew something changed and he got up 
And then thousands of people within days that he was leading thousands of people to Jesus. Now he didn't have what, um, he didn't speak in tongues later in life. Who knows? I mean, I, I know that he's associated with, uh, millions of other people and thousands of other Christian leaders over the years. And, you know, I know people grow and change, but I believe that he was baptized in the spirit, even though he didn't speak in tongues at that time. But he got up and he knew something had changed. So he felt something in his heart. Uh, and that was between him and God. Uh, Charles Wesley has a testimony of feeling um, the waves of God, you know, uh, and, you know, where it, it took like a whole day. And that changed his life and ministry. Um, Greg Laurie, you know, he testifies to just receiving it by faith, you know, um, and I'm not sure where, you know, he's led thousands of people to Jesus. He's got a mega ministry. So that's why on, say, tonight's coaching, I mentioned we shouldn't try to compare our experience with someone else's. Like for me, mine was what I shared with you. But I've seen other people, they may speak in tongues, but they don't feel the rush. They don't feel the power. I know other people, they feel the power. You know, God gives you what you need when you need it. And sometimes we, you know, and then some people try to compare, but I try to encourage people, hey, and now you, that's it. Like, keep walking in it, you know? Yeah, that's the point. Uh, because you say to, to keep asking. So um, how would someone who has, like you said, the heart has been touched, the life has been transformed, the commitment is there. There are people who... Uh, in their ministry, they are having many fruits, but they are not speaking in tongues. So uh, you said to keep asking. So if God has already given them what is equivalent to a baptism of the Holy with the Holy Spirit in someone else, but um, they are not speaking in tongues or whatever, so they might feel, okay, am I missing something? when in fact they've got much more than the other one who is speaking in tongues, but it's not having as much ministry food. You, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. When we well, say don't compare, okay, it's fine not to compare, but then where is the demarcation line to say, okay, I should not uh, stop, uh, I should stop asking and asking because um, the way God feels each one is is different i think this is this is where the connection with the holy spirit is very important because this is from most probably this is from this is from that standpoint but the overflow the walking in the spirit and flowing in the spirit will continue because someone can have a very strong blow of the holy spirit genuine but then if this connection of the Holy Spirit is not maintained, that walk of the Holy Spirit and fellowship of the Holy Spirit is not maintained, you lose it. Well, we still yeah. have to, we are still, we are still all learning about right. Right. everything that the Holy Spirit is, is, is doing and we can't put Holy Spirit in a, in a, in a, in a tunnel, I think, right? So I'm still learning a lot yeah. from the Holy Spirit too. I'm just asking questions because I have seen so many things and since you are an expert, I'm just throwing out the questions. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate that. So we can't lose the gifts of the Spirit because the Scripture... We cannot, we can. We cannot lose the gifts yeah, of the Spirit. Yeah. The gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. He doesn't take them away. And as I said earlier, we can have as much or as little of the Holy Spirit as we want, which is why I think we need to continually pray for more. I don't think we should have um, a demarcation. You'd mentioned a demarcation line. And, you know, like, I think we should all ask for more. Whatever God wants, I'm going to yeah. ask for more. I'm going to take it. Yeah. I'm just going to keep. Yeah keep going for it. Um, I don't want to stop. Now, some people choose to, right? Uh, there's situations in life. There are things that, you know, like even for me, like I was baptized in the spirit in 1998, but years later, I'm in a combat zone. And then years later, I have to heal of, of different 
things from, from war, from the two wars that I went to, you know, but I still pursued it, the Holy Spirit and grew. And there might be times where I felt spiritually dry, but I kept pursuing, pursuing the Lord. So I think my encouragement to people is whatever gifts of the Holy Spirit that you want, continue to go for it, continue to ask for more, don't stop, you know, like, and that's one thing about, um, and they're great people, uh, great churches, but too often people leave it at the baptism of the spirit. And too often people get hung up and mm -hmm. now that you got it, that's it. No, no, no. Yeah. There's more. Yeah. Yeah. more. There's more because the Holy Spirit is given without measure. So uh, my encouragement to everybody is don't stop, keep growing, you know, keep walking it out, keep fellowshipping with him. And uh, in time, you'll, you'll start moving in other gifts of the spirit as well that you didn't know you had, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and keep growing in it. So um, yeah, that's my encouragement. Just keep asking for more and say if someone, you know, for the most part, I believe most of the time tongues shows during the baptism of the spirit but not always it's a sign but i believe that that tongues is for all because i mean we see that in acts 2 38 39 but we still we just don't stop keep asking and if god also wants to give us the gift of prophecy i'm not gonna say no way <laughs> you know uh i want it if if god has it for me if god wants to give me the gift of administration my wife is a way better administrator than I am. <laughs> but if God wants to give, gift me in that more, I'll, say, I'll take it if that's more, as long as it's more of him through it. So, Well, the gift of prophecy is for everyone. If, uh, if we take the 1 uh, Corinthians 14, uh, 1, right? So it's yours too. It's, uh, it's whether you, one is uh, closely connected to him and hear from him, then the gift of prophecy will... Um, automatically, I think, come out whether we are aware of it or not. Is it bad? Well, I think you that's another, to for another day because <laughs> you're, you, uh, this is this is free for everybody. The Holy Spirit is the gift. The person of the Holy Spirit is the gift, and if the Holy Spirit is in you, then I personally believe. You can, okay, you all have spiritual gifts. I have spiritual gifts. You have strong spiritual gifts as well, okay? But at any time, at any moment, we should be available for God to use us in the gifts that we don't normally operate in um, because the Holy Spirit, who is the dispenser of the gifts, and he's flowing through us, can use us in any of the gifts at any time. Even in a spiritual gift that we don't normally operate in, we should be open to that. And it may not be our, our main strength or gift that we walk in at all times, but because the Holy Spirit's in you, I personally believe you have access to all the spiritual gifts. That doesn't mean that, that they always flow through you, but you should be open and available to prophesy at all times, to speak in tongues, to be able to even one time interpret tongues to administrate to serve to give helps um you know all the spiritual gifts because for me um healing the the gift of healing that's new in the last two or three years in, in my life in ministry that for years i walked in prophecy i walked in deliverance i walked in other things but nothing in healing i'd seen it once or twice a few times but now it's consistent you know, but, and then there are other times where um, I find myself serving. I mean, I, <laughs> my wife and I were helping the kids church two weeks ago. <laughs> I've never done kids ministry, but it's just like, oh, this is natural. You know, that's a gift in that moment to serve those kids. And I've, I've never done kids ministry before. So I think that's a, that's a great thing. I think all the gifts are available uh, we could, we should be available at any time to be used by God in any of the gifts at any time. Uh, but we should also just know that, you know, those are special deposits, but we all have different spiritual gifts that we might walk in more and more, um, and more strength. So for me, it's the prophetic and it's, it's, uh, uh, 
miracles and and now healings but that's fairly recent but i'm open to him using me in in gifts any of them whenever he wants so um to conclude uh is it safe for me to say that okay we should continually uh hunger for more and ask for more continually and it's up to jesus the baptizer to release his um whatever gift he wants to give it to us because he decides okay uh, i give you tongues today or some people he gives tongues in two years for free 10 years time uh some people he gives this gift first some people he gives this manifestation but whatever so we leave it to the sovereignty provided we hunger but we leave it to the sovereignty of god to release whatever he wants to release according to what he wants to do with the person and um so this is like in line with uh when paul say be continually be filled with the holy spirit and so this will be like there will be uh several uh, occasions of the spirit being outpoured upon us being released upon us being we are being immersed in the spirit it's just a a fresh anointing a fresh outpouring of a spirit so if we keep keep on asking and keep on yielding to eh, we have to yield to him right so he knows our heart he knows our desire and he's willing to give so that he be glorified in our lives yes well there's the baptism with the spirit and then there's ephesians 5 18 be being filled now it depends on when you look at the greek of ephesians 5 18 there's the one baptism with the spirit but then there's many 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 limitless fillings of the holy spirit so yes keep asking keep pursuing jesus he'll give you more he'll give you as much of him as, as you want um i like to encourage people to pray go go to your prayer closet pray until something happens pray until uh something supernatural happens and then pray some more you know keep praying you know the best revival meeting starts in your own home in the place of prayer that's where i shake when i pray that's where the holy spirit hits me because as i keep praying you know so there's the one baptism with spirit but ephesians 5 18 there's many fillings be being continually filled keep growing in that keep asking for more and keep walking in it and the, the you'll see amazing things as long as it's not to receive the manifestation but to seek the one to seek jesus himself and he'll he'll just pour it out we don't seek those those things you know just for the what it, what happens we seek the person of jesus and he'll bless us and we'll we'll have a great time so i hope that that encourages everybody you know keep you know receive the baptism of the spirit but then continually be filled, continually flow, continually uh, ask for more of the Holy Spirit. And um, so, yeah, uh, I hope that that encourages you, Marilyn. So when you say be continually be filled in one sentence, what would you interpret it? Every day ask to be filled in one way or another with Jesus, by Jesus. It could be a supernatural feeling it could be you know for me sometimes i feel a fire in my hands sometimes it's just a joy sometimes it's ju it's just an agreement between me and him by faith that i know that i'm filled uh, that i'm a son of god i'm i'm walking with him i know whose i am i know who i am in jesus and uh yeah it's just whether it's by faith or any of those things i'm open to all of it yeah, so we continually just ask the Holy Spirit, fill me. Mm -hmm. I'm yielded to you, right? Fill me and let him do whatever he wants. Yep. Amen. 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 So guys, it's 9, 12 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for being part of this. Um, I want. I do want to pray here real quick. You're free to go um, wh whenever you like, uh, you know, even during the teachings, I understand life and things happen, but I will stay on right after prayer if anybody has any more questions or whatever. But uh, so I'll pray and then uh, feel free to go. These this 
the login link that you had for tonight will work for next week and then the week after that. So use the same login link. Tell your friends about it too. But this week, I want to encourage you, you know, go through the e-course, Fellowship of the Holy Spirit, but pray until something happens. Go into your prayer closet and pray, seek the face of Jesus and see what happens. Amen. So Holy Spirit, have your way. Jesus, be glorified. I pray your blessing upon each and every person here tonight and those who will be watching this later. I bless them. Even now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you fill them all from head to toe. In Jesus' name, I agree with those who hunger for more. In Jesus' name, may you, the baptizer of the Spirit, lay hands on them, and may they be filled in Jesus' name. And may we continually be filled with your Holy Spirit. For those who want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I pray that they'll continue to ask, and then they will walk it out, and that that you will do it, that they'll see you that, and have an encounter with you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray that we hear testimonies of what you did next week. In Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, if, if whatever God did in you guys this week, email me. You have my, my personal email, jared at firebornministries.com. You can send me your testimonies as, as to what God did. Um, you can even ask questions and um, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them within 24 hours. Uh, I try to be real quick to respond, especially to my students. So thank you so much for being part of the first live coaching of Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And I bless you all in Jesus name. And I'll keep hanging out if anybody has any more questions.